you're gifted enough to play major college basketball at the University of Wisconsin, maybe have an opportunity to see the world and make some money. But something tells you that you need to take a different path. That is the faith story and part of our guest today. Ashley Thomas is with us. She is the executive director at Hope Street in Milwaukee. And we are blessed to have her on My Faith with Homer and Pip. I'm Tom Pippins. He's Steve the Homer True. Ashley, thank you. It's a gift to have you. And Homer always gets the best questions. And so he leads us off. That's not entirely true. I've said that Tommy should start it because everybody he brings on has this incredible story. And the story is better than my one question about where did you start your, where did your faith start? So I'll beat Tommy and say, tell us the story. <laughs> that's good. Well, that's a great, great introduction there. Um, so yeah, I would say my faith story started, uh, my family growing up, um, we went to church. Uh, my parents from a very early on age, it was really important that we knew that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And so I knew all of that and had this head knowledge of um, who Jesus was and what my faith could and should look like. Um, but it really honestly wasn't until college where it became more of a personal relationship and something that I actually lived out. And kind of the joke goes, I went to Madison and found Jesus. And my mother was terrified and thought of me going to Madison because she thought the opposite would happen. <laughs> Um, but my first weekend on campus, I actually had the opportunity to run into a couple other athletes that were involved with Athletes in Action, and they invited me to a Bible study, and at the time, I thought, oh, sure, if you're there. It was a couple of guys. I was like, sure, if you guys are going to be there, I want to go. Um, check it out, and so I started to go to that, and um, after being there just a couple of weeks, um, my curiosity was spiked, um, being around other people that seemed to just live different. They like knew all of this head knowledge, but they were living differently. And I realized that whatever my faith had been, it wasn't what they had. And I was wanting it to shift and change. So it started there. And Madison. Mm -hmm. This is always my follow-up. Your parents influenced you, but at some point you're thinking about it. God touches you, however you did. And then you buy into it, that's a whole different situation. At some point, it becomes on you, correct? Correct, yeah. Yeah, my parents laid the foundation, and I think if I wouldn't have had all of that, I probably wouldn't have been as curious as I was stepping onto the college campus. Um, but it, once it actually became my own, it became something that I could own and something that I then wanted to share with other people because I had personally experienced it. When, if you remember a day or a time, and I'll bet you do, when you became all in? Yes, we had, um, so I was part of that Athletes in Action crew and there was like a weekend retreat that we were gonna kind of use to jumpstart the upcoming season. So this is the summer before my freshman year. And um, I remember sitting on a hill and they had given us some things to read. And so I'm reading through some scripture passages and um, one just like really sunk in and it was like, okay. Like, and it was 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. And I've memorized and know this verse. Um, and as I was reading through it, it was like, okay, um, I'm, I'm aware of the things I can see and there's things that are unseen um, and the things that are unseen are eternal. And so I want to focus on those things and not just on the things that I can see in front of me because the things in front of me are going to shift and change and come and go. Um, but I want there to be a value and a purpose to my life and to the things that I'm doing. And so that weekend for me, it was like, all right, I'm heading into this college career. I'm going to get to play basketball. I'm going to get to do that for four years, but that's going to come and go. What's going to be beyond that? What's going to last beyond that? And the answer for me was just relationship. It was first that relationship with Jesus Christ, but then it was the relationship that I was going to have with teammates and other classmates and people on campus. And knowing that I had to care more about their eternity than I did about their temporary like or dislike of me as an athlete or as a person. Um, and so that for me, that weekend kind of solidified everything where it was like, I want my life to matter. And it's not gonna matter the way that I thought it was going to matter. It's gonna make an impact for others um, for days and years and their life to come. For those who don't know, explain athletes in action and how many there were, or how big the group was in Madison. Yep, um, so Athletes in Action falls underneath Campus Crusade. 
Um, and it was just focused on the athletes on campus. And so um, at the time, there was about 100 of us that would gather on a weekly basis. We had a weekly group on Wednesday nights called Badger Life. And we'd come together, do a little bit of worship, play a game, a uh, word would be shared, and then we would sometimes break off and have time for discussion. But the other important component of it was that we wanted Bible studies to be taking place on the different teams. And so um, track and football and soccer and softball and cross country, um, there was lots of different team Bible studies that were happening. And at the time, basketball didn't have one. Women's basketball didn't have one. And so I'm a freshman, pretty new in my faith journey, um, saying like, okay, well, I want women's basketball to have a Bible study. And those first couple of weeks um, probably could go far as far as months. It was myself and two of my other teammates, and we were all freshmen. But we like faithfully met and just continued to be together. And eventually that time turned into um, when we would go on away trips. It was the night before games, we would gather in the hotel room and it eventually was my entire team that was meeting together um, for those studies. Hold on, your entire team. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, a, this is a classic, this is Pip's story. One, I think it's, you're a freshman and you walk in one day and say, hey, we're starting a Bible study. And a couple of people were in that life and the rest of the people are looking at it like, this isn't, this is Madison. This isn't a part of it. And yet you go, well, and then one day we had the whole team there. <laughs> I need more. Yeah. I think the biggest thing with it was like, people just notice like, okay, well, everybody else is in that room doing something together, whether they're reading the Bible or whatever they're doing, they're doing something together and they wanted to join in. And those times were honestly the biggest stretch of my faith. I had, I no longer could just give like that patent response. People had really good questions and really wanted to know why I believed what I believed and what this book, <laughs> this Bible is saying. And so um, those times were just transformative, you know, and whether like everybody in the room considered themselves to be Christian or not, they were willing to engage in the conversation and be present. And some people wouldn't say anything and others would say a lot, um, but we would always end the time and we'd hold hands and we'd pray together as a team. and those are the moments that I'll remember forever. <laughs> I could remember things on the court that happened and st trips we got to take, but those moments with my teammates in those hotel rooms, just being able to be present and pray and go through God's word and ask questions was just so I, awesome. I know the answer to this and you don't have to mention her name, but I know that one of your proudest moments is when you realize that someone in that group found God, found Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yep, and she was one of the ones that asked all of the questions in the beginning. <laughs> if I know who you're talking about. <laughs> no, I don't. I just know that occurred. And I oh, know okay. that if they went up to you and you gave a speech, I think that would be among, if not the first thing that you would mention about your time in Madison as a basketball player. Yeah, yep. Yeah, people that came, you know, in the beginning that were just like, no, I don't believe that at all, but everyone else is here, so I'm going to be here. <laughs> Or, or in a certain lifestyle and we're just choosing to live one way and we're like, well, if I have to give up that in order to follow this, no thank you. And eventually coming back to a place of like, no, that's worth it and my, I'm free. And this like a life with Christ is freedom. And so I can walk away from those things because those things don't give me joy. They don't give me peace. Um, yeah, and they don't fulfill, so. What would you tell us that you learned not just about people's faith, but about your teammates. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it surprised you or just anything that jumps out that you would have never experienced had you not started and had this group. Everyone has a story. Um, I think we think we know where everybody's come from, or if you sit in a room and you have a bunch of division one athletes, so you know, like on one hand, you're like, we've all worked really hard at our craft, right? We're all here for a reason, <laughs> we didn't just get here we've worked to get here and yet everybody has a story that's led them to that point and has been through hardships or has been through some really neat experiences that has allowed their world view to be shaped a specific way and so the thing that i learned um, out of that is just always have a curiosity be willing to ask questions don't ascribe or assume you know where somebody's come from and why their viewpoints are what they are um, and i think we just become more human when we actually are able to ask those key questions and get to know people um, for who they are and not who we think that they are. Because we all, 
coming in, you know, to Madison, we all have a profile, we all have a bio that they've created and it looks really pretty and like well put together. And it's like, okay, that's why I'm on the court, but who are you off the court? And I think those are the things that, um, you know, as spectators and as fans and everything that like we remember, it's important that we celebrate and know who athletes are off the court as much as we celebrate and know who they are on the court. Because after on the court is what is for that time period, but off the court is what's going to last long after they've graduated and gone away. I will defer to Tommy in a second, but I have one more going to back to when you started with Athletes in Action. I just know you were probably there and, you, and there was somebody and you go, man, that person is so far above me. Their faith is, I'm just getting started. What You don't, again, have to mention the name. Was there a person or people that really amazed you or you were in awe of their relationship relative to yours? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, I, I don't mind. I don't think they would mind saying names. There's two people that were my mentors, and they're both Chris and Sarah Marigos, and they're married now. And Chris Marigos is now won Super Bowls and is <laughs> a really great athlete um, from Wisconsin. Um, those two for me lived out their faith in a way that like, I was like, I don't know how I get there, but I want to continue to pursue that the rest of my life. And they're just authentic. They were genuine. There was never any bad question you could ask them. Um, they were willing to, you know, dive in. And if they didn't know the answers, they weren't going to say that they did. They were willing to go and do the research with you and walk with you. Um, so those two people really exhibited faith in Christ um, to me. And they're two people that I still am close with and connected to and value and appreciate a lot. Tommy, it's all <laughs> yours. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, and I think a lot of people would say that. Like, if you ask about Athletes in Action and my era, be like, who are two people that were super influential in that? And it was those two. And they were willing to just dive in and pour in. And they were both, I mean, Chris was a, played football. You know, he had a, a life and a schedule and everything too. And yet we're still willing to just pour in and walk with people so well. Ashley, was there that opportunity to go see the world, make some money? And was, how difficult was it to turn away from that and do what you do now? And I'm eager to get into that. Uh, let's start there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I was done or, you know, my senior year, like everybody was kind of asking the question, like, what's next? What are we going to do? Um, do you get an agent? Do you try to go overseas? Do you go to a couple of WNBA tryouts? Um, and I had both of those options on the table. Um, but I just had a really clear sense that God was asking me to put my shoes on the shelf and be done. Um, the thing I didn't have a very clear sense on is what he was asking me to do next. And so that was terrifying because I'm like, well, hey, I know how to do this really well. Um, but I knew I had a passion for ministry and just um, walking with people and being with people and obviously sharing Christ. And so I had a connection with a friend in Milwaukee who um, his chaplain was a pastor at church and um, I got connected with him and basically was like, hey, basketball has been my job my entire life. I've never worked. <laughs> um, so I have no experience outside of that. Um, I have education, I would say I graduated. Um, do I need to go to more school to be involved in ministry or is there something I can do to kind of get my feet wet and just give this a try? And basically an opportunity came for an internship and so I did an internship in local missions here in Milwaukee. And kind of the rest is history <laughs> from there. One of the stops I made um, was Hope Street. And um, I started to volunteer there and eventually was asked to be on staff. Um, and I know without a doubt I'm where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> and with your gift of leadership, you're the head honcho there as the executive director. Here's a quote that really caught my eye from you. Our neighborhood is one in whose reputation precedes it. We have addiction, poverty, crime, and abuse. All of it eventually feels like the norm if you stay long enough. Yet on our corner, we fight against it all by inviting it in. We acknowledge we bring our own mess in with us, yet somehow together, beauty is made from the ashes. The day I chose to walk into Hope Street was the day I realized I could never not return. Please take it from there, Ashley. Yeah, I think oftentimes we think about where crime or where addiction or where the mess and the brokenness is and we do everything in our power to avoid it. Maybe we give money to it or we volunteer and enter into for a period of time, but then we walk away. 
Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. We need people that are willing to do that. Um, but I think the like unique thing about Hope Street is that we see that and we invite people to come in and live and be in a space for a season of time um, to kind of unwind and kind of allow all of those bad former patterns and habits to be broken down and see that there is a new way to live life. It could look different and we can grow and we can work towards human flourishing. Um, and so as we invite the mess in, we get to see beauty, like I mentioned, from the ashes being made as people walk back out our doors and enter back into the communities that they've come from. Um, and it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't always look beautiful. It doesn't always look the same. Um, but just an intentionality with meeting people where they're at, right? We don't want to be projects and we don't want to be put through a formula or a thing that says, hey, if you do this, this, and this, then this is your outcome. Um, but understanding that each person has goals um, and wants to be different. And if they want to be different and live different, we know the answer first comes with Christ um, and then practical, you know, building and developing new habits that allow people to grow and flourish. Mm -hmm. I know that Homer's got a question or two after listening to that. I, I do. What have you learned about those people at the top of your list? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I've learned that I, there's a lot I didn't know. Um, I learned that there's a lot I had been taught. There's a lot of biases and prejudice that I had owned, and I just never actually took the time to get to know the people that are on that list. And as I've got to know them, and I know their names, and I know their stories, and I see their faces, I realize that there's so much I can learn from them. Um, and so even though I go <laughs> to work each day and I do my best to help other people, I've been helped in ways. My worldview has been expanded. Um, my capacity for grace <laughs> has been expanded. And just my ability to love people that are different, people that um, have experienced things that are different than me. Um, and yet people who have a tremendous amount of resiliency and courage to continue to press forward when life has looked pretty drear. <laughs> and then, this is more of an accountant's question, but it just amazes me that those people that change, it almost always includes a relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. Yeah, it does. I claim even if you were an atheist, you'd yep. have to say that that's the case. You're now living it. Yep. Is that accurate? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we take a very holistic approach at Hope Street to just caring about people's spiritual needs, physical needs, emotional, mental, um, all of that. Like you're a whole person and you can try to make some small steps towards change, but a lot, oftentimes that's not lasting if you haven't truly been transformed. And we know transformation comes from the Holy Spirit and God at work in your life. And one of the practical ways that people are met with that when they walk through our doors and people will talk about it time and time again is like, we walk through this building and we feel peace and we are treated with dignity and we are loved. And I've never had anybody love me just simply to love me. It's always been because they're going to want something or need something from me in return. And the answer that we get to say is like, no, that's just Jesus. Like that's his gift to you, period. And nobody can take that away from you and nobody can taint that or thwart that or add to it or anything. That's just what it is, period. And as soon as somebody is able to receive and accept that and they've experienced it, um, life just automatically looks different in that moment, but it can begin to take a new trajectory towards um, well-being. Uh, I'm going to ask this. How old are you? How long have you been there? And I don't have your resume, but I know you have a long list of successful basketball achievements. Hmm. Where does this fit? Yeah, I am 30 years old. <laughs> I've been at Hope Street um, almost seven years. It'll be seven years in December. Um, and where does this fit? <laughs> That's a great question. I never would have guessed that this would have been part of my story. Um, but I think the... It's a really good question, actually. I think <laughs> my ambition for so long to be successful for myself, to reach goals and do things that I wanted to accomplish, has shifted to helping people realize um, that together we can do so much more and that the ultimate success is that our communities look different, that our communities are whole, and that people see themselves, aside from the things that they do, that they see that their being was created by God, 
and he's already he's already said what is true of us and that's that we're loved we're valued we have great tremendous worth um and i think for most of my life where i've worked so hard to gain value to gain worth to be seen to succeed um taking that 180 and seeing like oh my gosh i can i can rest in who i am because i don't have to achieve to work towards getting to be who i thought i needed to be um and so i think that's probably if i had to think i probably had to think about it a little bit more but i think that that would be my answer that most of my life i was taught and fell into this loophole of i need to achieve and work to be somebody and the work that i'm doing now and with the people that i get to be with every day we just know we get to operate out of who we already are god says who we are and we now get to live out of that and i think that there's so much freedom in that well i do have one more tommy and that is i love it i just assume uh given your greatness that your identity you are ashley the basketball player you now have people i'm sure that have no idea that you ever played basketball and they have a bond for you and like that's greater than you maybe ever achieved in your identity as a basketball player. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I think early on being the basketball player got me in some doors and people wanted to be around me for that. And I think now, especially as members walk in and like they don't know who I am or what I've done in my past. And, and I love that because like I get to know them and they get to know me. There's no preconceived notions. And so um, that's a gift. Yeah, it's part of my past and it's part of my story and it's mattered, but it doesn't define who I am today. All right, since I ask everybody this, I get one last one. That's, um, when, at any age and now, do you feel closest to Jesus? I feel closest to Jesus when I'm in that building, just sitting in a room, listening to the laughter. I can hear the kids running through the halls. Um, I can hear the prayers of our members and the things that they're thankful for. And I'm just reminded that this is the kingdom of God. This is what it's going to be like. There's diversity, there's um, joy, there's peace. Um, yeah, it's in those moments where it's just, it's with his people and listening to their hearts and just, there's no agenda, it's just being. Actually, it's very evident that you are standing in the gap for the Lord, you and your team. And it isn't always easy, right? There was a shooting there. There has been unrest. There are probably times that your heart has been broken. Can you talk about that? Can you talk about the suffering and how it has impacted your faith? And do you ever have times when you say, Lord, I never expected this. <laughs> Come yeah. on. Yeah. I need an assist. Yep. Yeah, I would say actually this last year at Hope Street has been the hardest year. Um, it's probably been one of the hardest years of my life, which sounds a little dramatic, but I, I probably could say that. Um, we had have experienced, like you had mentioned, there was a shooting, there was a break-in, um, there was a bomb threat, and then we lost two of our members that we were really close with. And um, all of it taught me that I need to continue to pray that God would break my heart for the things that break his. But when you pray that, to be careful <laughs> because it will break and it will crush you. Um, but through that, realizing that he's still there, he's in that too. Um, and so what I've learned is that I've just needed to be more and more dependent on him. I think I got to a place where I was like, I'm doing this with you, God, and this is good, and you're helping me, and this feels good. And it was in those moments when I, it was hard for me to walk through the door because I was that sad or that angry. Um, it was the moments where you had to be at funerals you didn't want to be at um, or have hard conversations with people um, where you're like, I cannot continue to do this on my own without you. And so if you want me here, then you need to show up <laughs> and I need your peace so that I can continue to do this with you. Um, so yeah, it's hard. But it's rewarding and it's in those moments too where you hear our members ability to still be thankful where they can say we're experiencing this but i have a place to lay my head on a pillow we're experiencing this but i've been sober for six months you know and, and it's just and the list goes on and on and on and i like listen to them and sometimes i want to like throw a book at them because i'm like stop being so thankful we should be angry <laughs> 
And then it's like, that's, that's again, that's where I see Jesus because I'm like, but God, there's no other reason that you would be saying that to me if it wasn't for his power and his presence in your life. As an African-American woman, a leader in the city in these difficult times where there's so much talk about the need for prayer, for conversation, Ashley, for unity. And our guest is Ashley Thomas, the executive director of Hope Street in Milwaukee, and obviously a marvelous woman and woman of God. Um, tell us, please, what's been going through your mind? What are your thoughts? What do you want people to know of all color? Mm -hmm. The thing that I think, especially as Christians, that we are called to remember in this season is that we are all made in his likeness and image. And he intentionally created each of us the way that he created us. And so we ought to celebrate that, embrace that, um, and see that. I think, um, you know, oftentimes people are like, I don't see color. I don't see this. I think God gave us eyes and I think he created each of us uniquely because he wanted us to see himself in each of us. And so as we, you know, enter into tough conversations and see all of the unrest and all this stuff, we can feel what we want to feel. You're, you're completely entitled to feel however you feel about it. But as we look at people that we would see through grace-filled eyes and that we would be curious, ask good questions, don't assume you know, or don't jump to a certain motive, because oftentimes when we jump to motives, they're usually bad. They're not good motives about people. Um, but just remember that God calls us to continue to lean in and see his people as his creation. And he asks us and calls us and begs us to say, you are beloved, you have value, you have worth, and you have dignity that God has given. Not humans, because if we gave it, we'd take it back when we didn't feel like giving it to somebody. That's God given. That's a gift. And so um, it's complicated. We need a tremendous amount of grace. Um, and a tremendous amount of humility to just say like, I don't think I have all the answers. I have some thoughts and I wanna share them, but I also wanna hear what you have to say too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Homer, I know you have to go in just a few minutes. Anything uh, from you to sign off? There's a phrase that Mother Teresa uses. She says, the greatest challenge of everyone is to see the face of Jesus in every person they run into. And I can't think of anyone we've had on in which you have said that time after time after time. She would be proud of you. Thank you. Is that how you look at it? Does that make any impact on what you try to do and how you try to do it? Yep. Because when we see people as human, right? The minute that we've said something or whatever it is at somebody, like they're no longer human and we can do anything to people we don't see as human. <laughs> right? So we can cast them away, we can demonize them, we can whatever. Um, but if we see Jesus in people's faces and through their stories and their names, my hope is that we would lean into that and we'd be curious and we'd want to be with them because that's what Jesus would do. Ashley, do you that's see hard. yourself staying at Hope Street? Um, because I know you're, you've, you've been going for an advanced degree, right? Theological studies, could you update us there? Do you see yourself at Hope Street? And how might people get involved in Hope Street? We wanna make sure we get that with our awesome producer, Brett Young, he can put something on the screen. Okay, um, yeah, so I actually gradu I graduate. <laughs> uh, it won't happen until August because everything got pushed back because of COVID, but I am done with my degree. So I'll have a master's in theology studies. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as far as involvement at Hope Street, um, there's a couple of ways and one very practical and you can do it from wherever you are and it sounds cliche, but we covet prayers. Um, as you had men mentioned, um, there's hard things that come up, but we know that our building continues to be a safe space and a place where transformation is happening because of the prayers of faithful people. And so um, we do send out a weekly prayer update. Um, we do post things on our website. So you can always tune in and um, look at those and see ways specifically that you can pray. But otherwise, however the Lord leads you, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, outside of that, we're all about relationship <laughs> at Hope Street. And so there's different opportunities to teach classes, come have coffee, bring donuts, eat food, <laughs> um, just come and be with people. Um, and that's the greatest gift for yourself, trust me, it'll transform you, it'll change your life, as well as just the people that live at Hope Street. So those are two quick ways. 
Um, and again, you can look at our website. Um, there's a bunch of different volunteer opportunities on there. As well. And what is that website again, please? Yep. Um, so it's hopestreetministry.org. And that ministry is singular. So hopestreetministry.org. So I'm not going to let this go. Are you going to, you see yourself there in five years, 10 years? Is it a day, a moment at a time with the Lord? Because I, I think it, Homer would, would agree here and Brett as well. You could do anything. I think my answer to that right now is that the lesson I've learned over the last seven years is to be obedient. And right now he has asked me to be there. And so that's what I will continue to do until he tells me to go somewhere else. And so I try not to get too far out ahead of myself. I try to just stick in the moment and receive the grace I need for today. I just love how I can learn. Just try to do his will, not mine. Thank you for that, Ashley. Homer, anything else from you, buddy? No, Tommy, you continue to amaze me person after person with an amazing story. Well, it's, it's the Holy Spirit, but Ashley Thomas, you are all we expected and then some. It's been a joy to have you. Thank you for sharing your faith story on my faith with Homer and Pip. And uh, we will continue to pray and, and step it up for you and, and everyone there at Hope Street. Thanks for all you do on behalf of Brent Young. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And if you have any ideas for another faith story, Tom at yahoo.com, P-I-P-I-N-E-S, Tom at yahoo.com. Thank you, and God bless you. Thanks.